Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So, SideFX is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. Hey, so I'm going over day 26, metallic. And once again, just to preface this, I'm just going to finish these last like five or six days and then I'm going straight back to tutorials. So don't worry, this series isn't going on forever um, and I am getting back to making tutorials. I just need to finish this up, you know, get some closure out of Hulai. So Metallic, I wanted to do something, you know, a bit unconventional for Metallic. So I did some research and I found these things called bismuth crystals. They look really cool. So I decided to try and recreate those. They have interesting patterns in that and I thought maybe I could create them procedurally. So that's what I tried and I'll show you how I did it. Right, so for this one, I had to actually single this out as a separate file. I had to go through my backups and find the one that I used for the final version because I cached it out and then made some changes. And so the cached version didn't match the version that was caching it, if that makes sense. So what I did was I reverted back to an older version so that I can show you how it actually works. So the idea with this is you have a point, it goes in a particular direction for a little while, and then it changes direction, 90 degrees, and then it moves down in that direction, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, which results in increasingly larger concentric squares. So if you don't know what I mean by that, I'll show you here. Yes, I'm using Microsoft Paint. I don't have Photoshop open, so Microsoft Paint it is. So something like this where it either goes in towards the center or something like this where it goes out from the center, right? And what I want is for every point to do that. So if there's a point over here, it'll also do that similar sort of thing so that you end up with a bunch of spirals like this. So to achieve that, I have to have a point and it needs a direction and that direction needs to flip after a certain number of steps. So maybe it's say eight steps and then it flips. Then maybe it'll do this for 10 steps and then it'll flip. And then maybe it'll do that for 12 steps and then flip. So what will happen is it will constantly grow out and it'll keep running the same pattern. And then of course you can add some randomization. So maybe it just goes like one step, two steps, three steps, six steps or something like that. So, you know, you'd end up with something more like this and obviously you'd end up with a very different shape so that's the idea behind it and then the idea is to make copies of it so that when you polywire it there's multiple stacked versions on top of each other so it gives a lot of depth to the final geometry so let me get out of microsoft paint if you want a tutorial for microsoft paint be sure to ask in the comment section you get some points scatter them, add normals to them. So they just look like this, right? Random direction normals. Um, this is actually after they've been changed a bit. So this is what you start with. And then based on some randomization and some 
weird maths that I do that is probably not right. A bit of a weird thing that I did here, but it gives me some interesting directions and then I can use this. So I also just initialize a move increment as a detail. This is what I was talking about, where if it moves three steps, then I can increment it by one, so it'll move four steps next. Then increment it by one, move five steps. Increment by one, move six. Increment by one, move seven. So each point has this increment on it. So then I just pgen and jitter so that there's more points. And in the solver, this is where I do all of those direction switches. This is the direction flip. You can see over here that I say, if moves equals zero, then do a flip. So moves is basically a countdown. So say we have two moves, it'll move one, two, and then this will be true, so it'll do a flip. And then it'll start moving one, two, say three, maybe to like four, and then it'll do a flip. Over here, you can see that I'm increasing the moves. So the moves will reset to base moves plus one. Base moves will also increase to base moves plus one. So that means that it will slowly increment up. Um, I also have this over here, so that if there is a near point in the position that this point wants to go to, and it has more than zero moves left, then add a point and create a polyline and all of that. So basically what that's saying is, if this isn't intersecting any other line, then create a line for me. So that just stops it from um, running over itself and like endlessly looping into itself. It'll kind of stop if it hits another piece. So I can show you what that looks like with one point. If I just delete, can delete points, everything but this, and then show you what that looks like. So a single one just looks like this. And so yeah, you can get the idea, right? It just sort of creates that sort of shape. And if you put all of them in, they all do that. And some of them at different rates because I have some randomization. So you can see some of these points kind of move out like that. And you end up with some interesting shapes. What happens after that is I polypath, polywire, and copy. So you can see that this copy over here is just a copy where I scale down each one. So it starts like that. You create copies of it and scale them in. You also have a thick outer one. And then you merge them together. And you end up with something like this. And at a later frame, it's pretty cool. It looks like that. So you can see that that's the main one over there. And maybe you can't really see it with the normals. So let me move my normals up here. Um, yeah, so you can see, right, the thick outline piece and then these thinner inside pieces generated by a copy. Once you have that, all you have to do is VDB from polygons. Once it's cached out, you have something that looks like this. So it kind of looks like a bunch of waffles all stuck together, but then you can render this out. So I'm going to switch to the other file, which is um, the render file. Right, so I have this bismuth over here, and the only thing that I add afterwards is this rotation so that as it grows, it also kind of rotates. So as far as a material is concerned, I'm just using the state where I get the um, normals from camera direction based on the UV of the object. Um, remap that because normals will be from minus one to one. You want it to be from zero to one if you're gonna run it through a ramp. So you run it through a ramp, um, control some colors over here. And then based on curvature, I also create a separate material so that the edges of this are a different material. So this edge piece over here just has a gold material. Um, the result of that is that the edges kind of have one color and the inside pieces have another. So when it's rendered, it looks like this. And the carp net is very simple. So he has a nice frame where he can properly see everything. There are some areas where, you know, the color really shows through quite nicely, that blue and all of that. So then I just degrain it so that it is a clearer image. With post effects where I'm just adding a bit of a blur right over there. So like a bloom and increase in contrast. I think it's with a lot, I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's got a lot and it's got some bloom. Also some vignette and re-add some grain. And that's all there is to this one. Once again, um, file is available for download. I think all of the files are now up. If you've liked any of the Hulai entries, you can check it out. This is going to be coming to an end very soon. Um, I have been very busy recently, so this has slowed down. It's kind of been put on the back burner. But I have a new series that's going to be coming to Patreon and then another separate series that's coming to YouTube. So the YouTube series will be a continuation of Houdini Isn't Scary for all of the other Dynamics networks. And then over on Patreon, I'm going to do a thing where 
I teach you basically how to be comfortable with Houdini. So the idea is to give you all of the knowledge that I can so that you can kind of be at my level. And then from there, you can, you know, hopefully be better than me. So yeah, that's what's coming up. But for now, I'm going to finish the Hulai series. So I'll see you tomorrow. I hope if I don't get caught up with something. So see you then. Bye.